grand rising. Remember how I told you about how the Gentiles are trying their best to be us now? As you can see, we've been going hard at these churches for a very long time, telling them how they've lied, how they've used uh, the Bible to justify slavery, how they use the Bible to justify that we are uh, three-fifths of a man or we're not a human at all. And these people have been, you know, just turning a blind eye to everything that we say um, because they don't believe anything that we say matters and they seem to believe that everything their pastors and priests have been telling them is the truth. But see, it's getting to the point where they can't just ignore us anymore. So here you go. This is what's from Christian Home, you know, on social media. No church saved you. God saved you through Jesus Christ. We must return to God. Amen. So all of a sudden now they're trying to make it sound as if somehow the church is leading people astray and that we're just going to, you know, bypass the church and just go directly to God. And what exactly does that look like? You guys still follow all of the same Christian principles that you learned in church. You still believe in Sunday service. You still believe in white Jesus. You still believe in Christmas and in Easter. You can eat whatever you want. The laws are done away with. So you really haven't done anything different. You just said all of a sudden now the church is bad and that we're just going to return to God. See, the thing is, is that you can't return to God if you were never with the Most High in the first place. So the only people that are going to be returning to the Most High are the ones that were with him from jump. You've always been a part of the church. And see, now you get to the point where you're seeing that all of your actions to support the church are not bringing you back the um, return you thought it was going to. You thought that if, you know, you just kept treating us so-called Negroes horribly um, and you just exploiting us and, and still in our lands and still in our identities and treating us like garbage, that you're going to be rewarded for that. But see, you were calling karma on yourself when every time you take a pledge of allegiance, say, you know, justice for all, we're all equal, God loves everyone, all in John 3, 16. When you guys are using all that, there's neither Jew nor Greek, when you guys are using those things, you're pretty much condemning yourselves and you're condemning uh, the church that you're actually a part of because th this society does not believe uh, for justice for all. They do not believe about justice for our people. When we talk about reparations, we talk about ma making us whole. You know, you stole 400 to 500 plus years of, of labor from us. You've uh, wronged us. You destroyed our families. You set up laws against us. All those actions have to be paid for. Just because you say they, that, that they don't doesn't mean anything. You've been saying a lot of things that aren't coming to pass. So also you saying you're not going to have to pay for any of these things is also something that's not going to come to pass. You saying you're going to be raptured away, that's not coming to pass. So all of a sudden we've been telling you that these churches have been lying to you, that these churches are the churches of Satan, not just the Catholic church, all churches. All churches have been lying to you. All churches have been set up to support Psalms 83. That's why like you guys all teach pretty much the same doctrine. You guys teach pretty much the same 66 books. You only read from certain books. You only read predominantly from the New Testament. You read predominantly from Paul. That's all part of this group. So you guys can't walk away from the church. You can't treat us horribly for all these years and then think that you just get to walk away from that and just say, oh, these churches are horrible. I'm just going to, we're going to return to God when you were never with the Most High in the first place. Let me show you a little something. This is a really good book. I suggest you look for it. White Awake. An honest look at what it means to be white. But he's talking about how they use the Bible to justify um, pretty much treating us horribly and how they played God by using the Bible to, uh, to be racist against our people. And trust me, all these things are going to come with a cost. So if you look here at the bottom, it says, It's important to wrap our minds around the doctrine of the Imago Dei. Because it, it's, it's a theological foundation we must stand on as we learn to critique and condemn the social construct of race in America and our historical reliance on white supremacy. Stated simply, the Imago Dei declares that all human beings are valuable and an infinite worth. Okay, God is the one that makes this declaration and no human being is allowed to challenge it. Uh, to do so is to play God. Yet, when we created the American construct of race, that's exactly what we did. We undercut the Imago Dei by establishing a narrative of racial difference. The fact that we recognize racial difference is not the issue. The theological danger comes with uh, of the race that assigns value based. What well, says uh, comes with a system of race that assigns value based. Okay. 
based on the differences, okay, based on these differences, assigning value to human beings in direct contradiction to the heart of God, and it is a sin of the highest order. Now let's name what the narrative of racial difference reveals each of us. Okay, reveals to each of us. First, it helps us to identify the sin behind racism. When we see an individual act of racism, most of us are comfortable labeling it a sin. But if our vision is limited to individual acts of racism, we are unable to understand both the world and ourselves. The original narrative of racial difference was built on a lie. The lie that human beings can be valued along a racial spectrum. The sin behind this lie touches every part of our society. Seeing the presence of the narrative of racial difference positions us to join the redemptive work of Jesus Christ in a unique and powerful way. Second, the narrative of racial difference can help us decipher the message that, um, that have informed our understanding of cultural identity, which has formed in the midst of a heated contest between two competing ideologies, the narrative okay, and the image uh, of the Imago Dei. To live in America, especially as a Christian, is to be bombarded by uh, diametrically opposing messages. The narrative of racial difference promotes a valuation of life measured along a racial continuum with a sliding scale, which dehumanizes both people of color and people who are white. Now, they like to say people of color, it's black people. You guys can't even just keep talking about people of color because we haven't all, all people of color have not been treated the same. But you guys use that to try to bring other people and other groups into it, like making it one big coalition. You treated, you did not, and you know, put chattel slavery on every single other person of color. You do that to the so-called Negroes, which is going to have to be paid for. It says the doctrine of the Imago Dei insists on recognizing every human being as an image bearer of God and therefore as valuable and worthy. To live um, from our identity in Christ, we must confront the ways the narrative has um, informed both our sense of self and our views of other people. It's made you be able to think that you're better than everyone else and that other people don't deserve justice. This is why you seem to think that we we don't deserve um, reparations. We don't deserve to have justice. That's what I mean. You, you can have justice, but we can't have justice. And this is what happens when you make a racial society, okay, a racist society where one group of people is above others and that only one people seems to get just us. That's why it's just us. Justice is just just us, just everybody else but us, but us so-called Negroes. That's why the Most High has to come back and fix all this because you can't be trusted to do so because you've already shown that you refuse to do so. And that is why now the Most High is tearing down your system. And see, you just seem to think that you don't have to pay and all you got to do is just walk away from the church and run to God. And that is not going to work. Because like I said, you can't return to him when from jump you set up a system that was against our people. You set up a system that was unjust. You know, the unjust weights is an abomination to the Most High. And your whole society has been set up on unjust weights. Shalom.